this video, you're gonna learn how to find the inverse of a function algebraically. So we're gonna go through four examples. You can pause the video and try some of these on your own, but let's dive into the first example and kind of walk through it. So when you have a function, uh, let's say f of x equals two x minus one, how do you find the inverse of that function? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is interchange the x's and the y's and solve for the new y. So in this case, we can think of f of x as like our y value. So let's just write that here. And we're gonna interchange the x and the y. So we're gonna say x equals two y minus one. It's like the input becomes the output and the output becomes the input. So now we're gonna solve for this new y. And the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna work from the outside in. So I'm gonna add one to both sides. So we have x plus one equals two y. Still solving for y, we're gonna do the opposite of multiplying by two. We're gonna divide both sides by two. And so this comes out to x divided by two is like one half x plus one half. I'm just gonna flip this and then what we can do, instead of using y, we can use the f inverse notation. That's this f minus one here. It tells us the inverse of function f and that's equal to one half x plus one half. Now, let's take a look at this a little bit closer. So if our original function was y equals two x minus one, say for example, we put uh, two in for x. So if I put two in for x, that goes into our function, two times two is four, minus one is three. If I take three and I put it into our inverse function, one half times three is three halves, plus one half is four halves, which is equal to two. So see how the function and the inverse function, they undo each other. The two took us to three, and then the inverse function took us back to two. It's kind of like multiplying and dividing, those are inverses or opposites of each other, uh, adding and subtracting, those are inverses, uh, squaring and square rooting, you know, they undo each other. Another way to look at this, now this is the algebraic way of doing it, but there's also an informal way of looking at it. And if we think of x as like our input, what are we doing? We're taking x, we're then uh, multiplying it by two, and then we're uh, subtracting one. So if we wanted to reverse those steps, what would we do? Instead of subtracting one, we're going this direction now, we would add one, and instead of multiplying by two, we would divide by two, right? So that's look at what we did here. So we said, okay, we're adding one, and then we're dividing by two, and that's how we got our inverse function. So we're just reversing those steps. Let's take a look at another example. So for number two now, f of x is equal to x plus two divided by three. How do we find the inverse of that function? Well again, remember we can think of f of x as like y, we're gonna interchange the x and the y, and we're gonna solve for the new y. So that's the algebraic way of doing it. So, so uh, interchange x and y, solve for this new y. So how can we get this new y by itself? Well, instead of dividing by three, how about if we multiply both sides by three? Those cancel each other out. So now we have three x is equal to y plus two. Instead of adding two, let's subtract two. So now we get y equals three x minus two. And then instead of leaving it like this, let's write it in the inverse notation. F inverse of x is equal to three x minus two. Now let's take a look at this graphically for a minute. So this function right here is really like one third x plus two thirds. So let's write that down. F of x is equal to one third x plus two thirds. So if we were to graph these functions, on our xy coordinate plane. Let's start with this inverse function. So the y-intercept is negative two and has a slope of three. So we're going up three over one. We can repeat that process, up three over one. And there's our inverse function. If we graph the original function, it has a y-intercept of two thirds, which is right about there, and has a slope of uh, rise one, run three, which is right about there. And let me see if I can kind of draw this somewhat accurately here, okay, without graph paper. But one thing you'll notice about these two graphs is that they're reflections over this 45 degree line, which is the line y equals x. So graphically, inverse functions, they're reflections over that line y equals x. Let's take a look at two more examples. Okay, see if you can pause the video and try number three and four on your own. Number four is particularly challenging, but we'll go through it. But give it a try if you, if you would, please. So for number three, what do you think you would do on that one to find the inverse? 
Well, if I was gonna do this, remember I would think of f of x as like our y value, and we're gonna interchange the input and the output, or the x and the y value, and we're gonna solve for this new y value. So working from the outside in towards the y, we're gonna say instead of adding nine, let's subtract nine from both sides, keep that equation balanced, right? Instead of multiplying by negative four, let's divide both sides by negative four. And you can think of this as negative one-fourth x, and a negative nine divided by negative four is a positive nine-fourths. I'm gonna flip it and write it in our inverse notation, our f minus one, that inverse notation, and this is gonna equal negative one-fourth x plus nine-fourths, and that's your inverse function of this guy right here. Now, before we get to the end of this video, I'll put a link uh, to another video that I did, like talking more deeply about inverse functions and how to do compositions to sh prove that they're inverses and how to limit the domains if a function is inverse is not a function, so you can make it an inverse a function. So I'll put a link at the very end, but let's try this last example, number four. How did you find the inverse of this one? Well, again, remember f of x, we think of that as like our output or our y. Wherever we see x, we put y and vice versa. So in this case, I'm gonna replace y with x, replace the x's with y. So in this case, we have to put another y here as well. And we're gonna to try to get this new y by itself. We've got two of them though, so this is a little bit of a challenge. Let's think of this as a fraction. Anything divided by one is itself. And what we can do is we can do our cross product or the cross multiplying. So x times y minus three, equals one times y plus two. Now we can distribute and simplify. So we've got xy minus three x equals one y plus two. Because we're trying to get the y by itself, any term that has a y in it, let's get it on one side. Any term that doesn't have a y in it, let's get it to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract y from both sides and I'm gonna add three x to both sides keep it balanced. So that gives us xy minus y, the three x's cancel, the y's cancel, and we get three x plus two. Now what I'm gonna do here, this is the, the key to this particular problem, is we're gonna factor out that y, like a kind of like a greatest common factor, we're just factoring out y. That's gonna leave us with x minus one. You can check your work by distributing. You'll get back the original. And then all we have to do now to get this y by itself is divide both sides by the quantity x minus one, and you can see y is by itself. So let's write this in the inverse notation. f inverse of x is equal to three x plus two over x minus one, and you got it. So great job if you're able to follow these four examples. Again, if you want more practice, Follow me over to the complete guide that I did talking about inverse functions right over there in that video. I'll see you over there and we'll get some more practice.